Good evening, everyone. So nice to see such a full house like this. It's wonderful. Thank you very much for coming. Tonight, we are pleased that Father Jerry Hogan is going to be with us to share his love of the circus family. Uh, he works for the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops as a national circus cha chaplain, a position he has held for over 25 years. He divides his time between Massachusetts and Sarasota, Florida, how, and as well as the rest of the country. However, as a priest in the Archdiocese of Boston, he has been assigned to a number of other communities as well as here in Foxborough. In fact, just this past weekend, he was assigned a, as a temporary administrator at Our Lady of Fatima Church in Sudbury until Gen, uh, June 1st, and then he's going to return to us here in Foxborough. So with the closing of the Ringling Circus, he is also chairman of something that's near and dear to his heart, the, the Circus and Traveling Shows Retirement Project. And this is a retirement uh, public charity commonly, uh, commonly referred to as CATS. It was founded to assist show people with age or health problems in their search for affordable housing. So you can see he wears many hats in his calling. And uh, we in Foxboro always give him a warm welcome. So let the show begin. Thank you, Joe. I look out, the, it's like the whole parish is here. <laughs> I know many of you. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, this will be different than the time at last year I showed a movie called um, After Circus at the parish. This will be a, a lot different. Um, I, well, I'll tell you how. First, the first question I want to ask me is, how did you get involved? And I think I might as well start off with that. Uh, back in 1954, my father took me to the Ringing Brothers Barn and Bailey Circus for the first time. And as many of you probably went to Ringing Brothers, you're just overwhelmed seeing the acts. And uh, it was just very exciting. And when I went home, I had a new neighbor. He just moved in and married a woman, a woman from my hometown, Woven. And he had worked with Ringing Brothers Barn and Bailey. He worked on the horses. So I had a neighbor who, uh, loved the circus, and he started to teach me the circus, bring me books and uh, stuff. It was like having a professional baseball football player as your neighbor, you know? You know, I would spend more time with Ed Hennessy than my family. It was fascinating, it, you know, I was only, uh, I was young at the time. Uh, so, um, and then he introduced me to a priest from uh, Cambridge, Mass, Father Ed Sullivan. <laughs> you know, everybody hears that and they think of the TV personality. And he um, was the, one of the uh, early circus chaplains. And uh, he uh, was a pastor in All Saints in Roxbury and then out in Squanum, Star of the Sea. And uh, I got pictures of myself with him when I was 16 years old on the Hunt Brothers Circus. Uh, little did I know, when I look at those pictures now, that I thought I'd be a priest, let alone fall in Father Ed's footsteps. So you never know what the Lord has in, in mind. So eventually, um, yeah, I, I liked the circus. I became a priest, and I'd take the youth groups to circus. I'd go occasionally. Uh, Big Apple started to come into Boston, all these different shows. I always go to Ringling every year. And then in 1990, I joined an organization called Circus Fans of America, and I went to the National Convention in Milwaukee. It was held in conjunction with Milwaukee. That for many years, they had this parade called the Great Circus Parade, where they bring out uh, from Barrow, Wisconsin, 75 uh, wagons that they've restored. And it was enormous. You know, we think we have parades here in New England. We don't have parades. <laughs> yeah. It became the third largest in the country. You had Rose Parade, you had Macy's, and then you had this. This was in the second week in July on a Sunday. The parade was three and a half hours. <laughs> and they brought every band from every, all over New England. You'd have University of Michigan, University of Wisconsin, and they have all these wagons, and oh, it was, it was fabulous. And they had people that started uh, camping out on Thursday. Three million people watched it, and it was always on PBS, and uh, it, it was fabulous. So anyway, that parade, and I got to know all these other crazy people like the circus. <laughs> it was kind of funny because you never knew what they were, except you got to know their names and where they were from, you know, but that's all you knew about them. And <laughs> what happened was um, I was watching 2020 years later. There was a friend of mine, Dale Riker. He was originally from uh, Michigan. He moved to Sarasota, and he's on 2020. He's a circuit court judge. I didn't know you were a circuit court judge. Yeah, it's not important, you know. And uh, so they all kept on saying, do you know Father Jack Tony? He's a uh, priest with the Ringling Brothers. I said, no. So you've got to meet him. So I, 
He was a La Salette priest, so he spent a lot of time down in La Salette, uh, in Attleboro. So I went down to Providence that year and met him, and he was in his late 70s at that time, getting older. He said, you ever think of doing this work? I said, well, what do you do? Because uh, I was a college chaplain at the time, and you do a lot of ministry of presence hanging around. I said, I can do that. But what happened was <laughs> Jack got sick, and he gave my name to the bishops. So I worked for the bishops of the United States, United States Catholic Conference of Bishops. And technically, I'm in charge of every Catholic and every circus in the United States. So um, it's quite an interesting experience. So that's how it started. And I was appointed 25 years ago in March. So this is a, it's been exciting, challenging. I'll tell you all about it as we, we go on. But um, I thought we'd begin setting the tone. So Paul put it on. This is a little A&E introduction of circus. I think it, it's, uh, it'll pique your interest. You've probably seen some of these people before. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to the circus. And enter an ever-changing yet familiar world of clowns, animals, and acrobats, where joy, laughter, and daring do can be seen with childlike wonder. Enter a world where dreams come to life. where the fantastic is within reach. Where skill, strength, and beauty are brought to life by the light of imagination. may only come to town once a year, but it lives in everyone's imagination as a dazzling, daring, funny, and even enchanting spectacle. Everybody loves the circus, even those who've never seen one. It opens up the door to a place of fantasy, where anything is possible, even flying. Okay. Um, that gives you a, a taste and a flavor of a circus. When I look at that, that's my parish. Many of those people I married, baptized their children. And uh, when I looked at it now, I said, oh my God. So it's been a few years. Uh, so it, in the, it was Ringling Brothers, it was Big Apple Circus, it was the Mexican Circus, a lot of different shows, because there are many different shows. Of course, we have to talk about the closing Ringling Brothers, Bonham Bailey. We'll talk about that a little later, but um, that was uh, last year it closed after 144 years, older than Coca-Cola in American baseball. Um, and that was a tradition. We never thought that would, would close, but um, that was the big one, the big show. And... Uh, we used to call it, in, in circus terms, we call it Big Bertha. And uh, it was, it was it around for an awful long time. But my ministry is, was a lot with them, because they had two units, 350 in each unit, travel by train, 57 cars in each train over a mile long. So, um, you know, that was a lot of, they announced January 14th last year, 2017, until closing. And we closed uh, the Red Show in Providence, um, First week in uh, May, and two weeks later we closed the other show in uh, Union Air, New York. 
Um, but it, it's, you know, that was the biggie. But there are still 41 circuses out there. So they're all, a lot of them are small. Big Apple has just come back and it's in Boston now. I've been visiting them. So anyway, um, they're all interesting people. I get a lot of, what are they like? Well, they're like you and I, except they travel an awful lot. And some of them have been handed down generation after generation. I think the most I know is eight generations. So, but there's other people who, like, Kids used to go to clown college and become clowns, and then take do on other racks. Girls who, from dancing schools who become dancers, and then they might fall in love too. So it, it people entered it from different areas, and also people the idea of running away and joining the circus. That's absolutely true. Uh, people become working men, or we call them you, you old days used to call them roustabouts. Uh, people would you know drop in and just join the circus. There's an interesting story. One time I was in Asheville, North Carolina, visiting a show. Um, it was a ringling show, and I was talking to this guy at the ring crib. He, he was a worker around the ring crib, and he says, Oh, Father, I'm leaving the show. I said, well, What are you going to do? Well, he says, I got two master's degrees. I says, And he's working you're like a working man. I said, You do? He says, Yeah. Someone in the, in the office has helped me with my resume. I said, How'd you get it? Well, I was biking through s such and such a state, and I thought I joined the circus two years ago. <laughs> oh, really? You know? Yeah, yeah. There was another guy who used to take care of the elephants. We have to have a 24-hour man who was on the elephants. He had a PhD in mathematics. <laughs> so you never know what these people, where they come from, why they want, but people do drop and join the circus. Um, it's interesting because as I got involved in it and got to know these people, my most important role is, um, I take care of everyone, not just the Catholics, is confidentiality. Um, when you live in a close quarters, whether you're on a circus train or you got your trailer and you're moving, some shows move every day, we call those the mud shows. If you're ever on one of those, you'll know why, because when it rains, boy, it's tough to get those car, trucks and trailers off the, the lot. Um, but so they live in such a close <coughs> area that you become their confidant. So I spend a lot of time counseling because they know the buck stops with me. So if someone said, Father Jerry, should write a book. Oh, no. I know where all the bodies are buried. So I'm not going to write a book. Because uh, I, I see the good in, in the difficult situations that you, you run into. But it's, um, it's fascinating because um, in the Catholic Church, in our faith tradition, they want to go to church. And they can't. They work Saturday and Sundays. They usually move, uh, the big shows usually move on Monday or Tuesday. So we do, I do a lot of weddings in the circus on Monday or Tuesday because um, that's when they're home. One of my friends, the two clowns, when I first got the gig, oh, they've been married 21 years now. So we're gonna do it in Boston. In the old days, they were in Boston for two weeks, so the Monday, so we got All Saints Church in the North End. And I helped them set it up. We got the caterer for half price. We got the flowers for half price. We got the, you know, who gets married on a Monday, right? You know? So they, they, all, the, all the shop people around Boston were well, great. They could, they could get some more money. You know, it was fabulous. And the whole show came. So we all went over from the garden to All Saints right there in the North End, you know. And we had the, and the church gave us a reception downstairs, you know. So, so that was a lot of fun. I've, uh, I've done a lot of baptisms in a lot of very interesting places. Uh, uh, up in Montana uh, with Carson and Barn Circuit. They're all over the place. And uh, once you're there, and once they trust you, you see, that is one of the big things, is um, they move so much, and in the course of the history, um, people that aren't in the circus, we call townies, you know. But if you became a circus fan, or you did a favor for a circus person, they, they would appreciate that, and you'd be friends for life. But, but, you know, a lot of times they've got burnt in cities, stuff like that. Because people think of them, quote unquote, as gy gypsies, trance, and thieves. Who are these people? You know, you know, they're, they're unbelievably fabulous. But you don't see what they go through and understanding. I've had them, you know, the regular show was in time. I used to bring them to the dentist. My dentist and uh, not the end of it, used to give us breaks. Oh, it's unbelievable, you know. And so they're always, the first thing you do when the ringlings just arrive with the clowns, I'd have to show them where the laundry mat was, you know. And all that practical things you don't realize when you travel. So this next uh, DVD, we're all set, Paul, get it ready. This is called Faith and Values. This was done, let me say a few more things about it. Yeah, it was done a number of years ago now. 
Um, but it's, a lot of it's filmed in Sarasota, where I happen to spend the winters. And every year we have a big circus mass. And you'll see some pictures of, of, of St. Martha's Church and that, so fire away. Here we go. It's the annual circus mass, and Father Jerry Hogan believes in dressing for the occasion. You might see one vestment has uh, animals, tigers on it, the other vestment has clowns. And they really signify, and I think they relate to the circus people and say, hey, look at God is in our lives. Ever since the Roaring Twenties, St. Martha's has served as the home church for the men, women, and children who work and travel with the circus. The gifts that you have, circus people, are given to you by God. The times that you learn in your craft as clowns, that you can make people laugh. When all those things come together, that's the spirit working in your life. Jerry Hogan serves as a kind of spiritual ringmaster for a constantly moving congregation of almost 6,000 people. He's with them on the road, not just for the Catholics, but for anybody needing a shoulder to lean on. Cindy Harriet grew up in a circus family, and she knows about the spiritual challenges of life on the road. I think we all, whatever walk of life, you need someone that you need to talk to and have a little comforting feeling, and maybe sometimes you actually need to, you know, talk about some personal problems or just anything in general. Cindy's husband, Roy Wells, is the son of a couple of South Dakota school teachers. So when he and Cindy tied the knot, Roy found out that in a circus marriage, there's always a ring, even if it's not on your finger. I mean, we're showing there lots of times seven days a week and things, and there's not a lot of time to go to church or, you know, to, you don't have, you, know, you don't have your church, I mean, because we're on the road for seven or eight months at a time. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Midway through the circus mass, Jennifer Weldy and her brother John received the sacrament of confirmation. It meant a lot for me to do it there, too, in front of everybody from our business, so. Those are my friends, you know, I don't really have friends that are are out of the business. All my friends are in the business and they have animals too. God is very important in our lives and I want to instill that in our children, of course. The Weldies are world famous. They and their family of bears have performed in circuses for four generations now. <laughs> Being a circus priest means baptisms, confirmations, weddings, funerals, and a big part of the job, according to Father Jerry Hogan, is just hanging around with people who work in the circus. And if it's early on a Sarasota morning, then Jerry is hanging out at Bob's place, where everywhere you look, you see the circus. You don't know where you're going to be. So you can be counseling someone on an elephant tub in the middle of Madison Square Garden, or you could be down here in Sarasota, Florida, uh, watching them train their animals, and uh, in, in the same time, listening to their marriage problems. Those jobs are tame compared with the annual custom of blessing Kay Rosaire's really large cats. Hi. <laughs> and Kay has invited me the last few years to come and to bless them and to show them that they're created by our creator and that we're supposed to take care of them. Well, I appreciate you coming out oh, again. I, I do it. think it makes a difference. I haven't great. had any sick animals for the last three years. Praise the Lord. Holiness to me is found in the encounters where God comes alive. And you know, uh, our God uh, came on this earth and was in the form of a human being, Jesus Christ. And that's my faith tradition. And I really believe that Jesus cried, laughed, sang, danced, jumped with joy. If Jesus was here, he'd love the circus. Jerry Hogan is just a South Boston kid who cannot even imagine a better job than this. Serving the people of the circus, bringing the sacraments, the gospel, and a foretaste of heaven to the greatest show on earth. In Sarasota, Florida, Jim Melchiori for America at Worship. When I look at that now, it really dates myself. Uh, that Bob, uh, the store that Bob was in, he doesn't have that, he has a train. And one of our parishioners, was, I, I brought her to the, <laughs> so he has a train, doesn't travel, but it's, the circus train, and that's where we have breakfast now and that, so. Um, when I look at that, I hadn't seen it in a long time. I, it, it really shakes me up a little because uh, the two kids, I, uh, the Weldies that I, I confirmed, um, great family, They're, they've been in the business with bears all their life, 67, 68 years. 
Um, Jennifer, that was confirmed, I married her a number of years later, and after nine years of marriage, they finally had a baby. And uh, I baptized it lot, um, um, January of 2017. And uh, husband there, Johnny and Monica, great people. Uh, three weeks later, Johnny died of a heart attack in bed. Devastated the community. I just finished a 7.30 mass, and I got a call from Monica crying. Father Jerry, Johnny died. Oh, jeez. Run up to the house. They live in Mayaka because they have animals, so they have to move outside the, the, the boundaries of Sarasota. And, uh, you know, it was unbelievable. So naturally we had the funeral uh, a few days later in, um, in St. Martha's. We filled the church and the balcony. Uh, everyone came, you know, because he was well-loved, beautiful man. So Monica's trying to run it herself. They don't do circuses anymore. They do fairs. So they go out to a fair where they get very good money for 17 days or 12 days, whatever it may be, and they do a presentation. They were in the Brockton Fair years ago. And so uh, and they're doing okay, but it, it's been very hard. He's, he's well-loved and missed quite a bit. So those are things that happen to you. You know, whether you're young or old, and when there's a tragedy, and I've dealt with a number of tragedies. Um, I've dealt with five tragedies and three of fatalities. Um, and that really brings the community together. When I first started 25 years ago, Alex Scotia was an elephant trainer on Ringling, and he, it was a bad elephant up at the Wilson, which is a, we had two places. Wilson was, we kept the, the, the bad elephants there, really, it was senile. You don't kill them, you're senile and the elephant put him down. And I had just become the chaplain. I was in Providence at the Red Show, and I got back to Boston, the South here, I was over in time, and, and they had me on an airplane. I went out to Asheville, North Carolina, and then I went to um, the show and did, did his funeral uh, down in uh, uh, Venice, Florida. So that was the beginning of some other d uh, difficult situations. We had a, another boy, Richard Chipperfield, who was attacked by a tiger. Uh, in, <laughs> A tiger, a tiger that he grew up with, and he named him after Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was named Arnie. He weighed like 370 pounds, and he was on a podium, a pedestal, and they were, him and his brother were doing the act together, <coughs> the Chipperfield boys, and uh, Richard had just come over. Graham had been on the show for like three years, and they were going to do the act together, and we had opened in um, Tampa, and we were now in St. Petersburg, and they, they were shooting for the program, and all of a sudden, the tiger... And, came over and he grabbed Richard in the back. Now, you probably don't know, but there's a lot of fat in tigers in the back, and that's how they move their cubs. They would drag them. I'll give you an example, Siegfried and Roy. You know, they had the attack. Well, Siegfried and Roy were all by the circus, so I knew them. I'd seen them many, many times. I did a baptism. They were the, the godfathers. So I'd seen them, and I know them pretty well. And that happened, too. So when, in their act, there was a time when Monaco would put his hand, sh shoulders on on Roy's shoulders. He'd sit up right there and he'd have a microphone. Well, that time, Roy had a little stroke and the tiger noticed it. So he picked him by the back and was taking him off the stage. Oh. Yeah, he was trying to save him. Yeah. So, so all of a sudden, Arnie went over and grabbed poor Richard and all hell broke loose. Graham was in the cage, and when they saw the blood, some of the cats were starting to go for him. Oh, Jesus, awful. Um, and Graham went out. And had, we didn't know he had a shotgun. And the, one of the, he came out, and he, he killed Annie. And you know, rights people went crazy. And as Graham said, I'll never work again. And he's right. He sells tents in England now. So uh, that, that was a long time ago. So that was a tough one. And then uh, a few years later, um, we had, I was up in St. Paul, Minnesota. We, we, we created a third unit called the Gold Unit. It would play different arenas where the big shows wouldn't play. It wasn't traveled by train. They traveled by, um, by truck and trail. So we're up in Minnesota. I went up to see them. I was in Barrow, Wisconsin. I drove up to Minneapolis, Minnesota. And um, uh, having a senior moment. Desi Espana. How could I forget Desi? Uh, the Espana family, she was Bulgarian, and she married uh, this uh, boy, um, the Espana, Giovanna Espana, and they had two beautiful kids who I baptized. Know them very well, um, and I just got up to the time, uh, and Desi said, you're going to do Mass for us? I said, yeah, I'll do it right after the second show. They do three shows on Saturday. And she was going out to perform, and she 
went up a silk. She was on one side, and her sister-in-law was in the middle, and another girl uh, was on the other side, Trovaris girl. And, um, and all of a sudden, I'm up in the concourse with my friend Egro, John Kenny Kenny, selling programs, and we hear uh, a scream. And in the circus business, you've heard the song from Little Night Music, Send In the Clowns? Yes. Well, that's what we do when there's an accident. You send in the clowns, but the clowns have to know when they come in. So the band switches to the 12th Street rig. So everyone in the show knows there's an accident. So you go forward to assist. So I'm in the concourse. I look down, and there's Desi. The bolt from the, um, the silk fell, and she landed on her head. Oh, she's, yeah. And it was like, whoa, right there, you know? It just, but I'll never forget it. You know, it was, I was, and I went to the hospital, and we all got in the hospital. Amazing, the circus family. We're in the hospital, and the phone stopped ringing. People in Bulgaria heard about it, people from Hungary, people from Italy. The community is really international. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, and she went brain dead, but they didn't want to um, say, Yvonne wanted to spend the night with her. So, we, we, so we, I went back to the end of the third show to tell the people to pray for her. We didn't say she had passed away. I get back there and I'm talking to them, and all of a sudden, I got the call. That she, she, that she died. Back to the hospital at 2 in the morning. Some of the family had got in there, and um, it was incredible. So now uh, we had to perform the next day, two shows. And I said mass for the show, and I said dedicated to mass for Desi, and the whole show comes, even people, the, the non-believers would be there. And uh, then we had the problem is we were supposed to uh, go to uh, Iowa, the Luther, um, I don't know where it was, it was the middle of the two-day two stand, Tuesday and Wednesday in Iowa. So we're figuring out what we're going to do. Well, they want to take the body down to, they lived in Englewood outside of Venice, but uh, uh, we also wanted to um, do something for the show. So they said, well, we want to do a, a funeral on the show in, on Wednesday in Iowa. I said, oh, okay. How am I going to find a Catholic church in, in Iowa on a Saturday, Sunday afternoon at 4.30? So I start calling. I got this priest answers, not an answering machine, a priest, he actually answered the phone. And I said, to, told him the circumstances. Oh, I got three churches. You do, Father, yeah. You want St. Wenceslas? Yeah, there's nothing going on at noon. That sounds great, Father. So I flew back on Monday, changed my underwear, and then flew back Tuesday. <laughs> and we cremated the body, and we had a wake right there in the ring after the show, and we all gathered at St. Wenceslas's. People came in to weren't working from all over the country for that one, and it was amazing. And beautiful, rose-colored stained glass windows. I mean, this church was unbelievable. Well, during World War II, these people were all from Czechoslovakia. They stored all the stained glass windows in a warehouse. And when they all moved to Iowa to work in the farms, they brought all the stained glass windows with them. It was magnificent. And then the following week was Memorial Day weekend. On Monday, I had a big funeral at the cathedral in Venice. And we, we almost filled, it was three quarters filled with circus people. You know? so, I mean, she's a beautiful woman, 34 years old. Drop dead gorgeous inside and out. You know, well missed. Boy, it, was, it was really difficult. Well, that's enough. Uh, there's a few other stories we'll talk about later. The hair hangers, you're familiar with that. So let's do another DVD, Paul. This is Good Morning America. Dun, da, da, da. Well, we like this religion story a lot because it's also about the circus, hence the music, and who doesn't like the circus? Father Jerry Hogan has always liked the circus ever since he was a kid but he never would have predicted that his religious calling would have led him to join the circus. Here's ABC's Steve Avison. There are dozens of circuses in America entertaining audiences across the country. The performers have special skills, and so does their pastor. These people cannot go to a church weekly because they're always on the road. This tent here is their sacred place. This is their temple, and we have to bring the lodge to them. For Father Jerry Hogan, that means going on the road 150 days a year. Since 1993, he's continued a 70-year tradition in the Catholic Church, crisscrossing the country, blessing tents and tigers, 
performing communions and baptisms, and offering counsel and friendship to members of the circus who consider him family. Every time I see you, you know, it's like every maybe two or three months that she gets tall and tall and tall. <laughs> The Big Apple Circus is a regular part of his ministry. Norman Barrett is ringmaster. We need him, we need him as much as possible. It keeps us with our feet firmly on the ground. We know where we are when he's around. Truth is, despite the smiles, in the circus, performers don't always have their feet on the ground. During hard times, they know when Father Jerry's in the audience, he will be there for them. Sometimes they ask me to watch them or they ask me to pray for them. So I might be watching the act for a different point of view than, um, than the audience is. I'm walking walk act and praying that they get through it. On this day, it is one of the stars of the Big Apple Circus who needs support. Bello Nock is a fourth generation circus performer. Father Jerry knows his family well. He was on Ringling for like five years. Yes, I know. And he did uh, a high wire over a cage of oh, lions. Cage of lions. Yeah. I know. That was incredible. So, yeah. When Bellow's legendary Uncle Pio died after final bows at a show in mid-December, it was a painful loss. Father Jerry went to New York to be with his friend. There's 2,000 people out there and you still have to work. That gives you that little bit of energy that it's not about you anymore. It's about them. They, you, yeah. they, came, you can't, they came so you can make them happy. Absolutely. Forget about them. Helping the show go on for one gypsy performer is hard enough for this traveling minister. But when tragedy strikes the entire circus, it can be overwhelming. In 1994, that meant a painful seven days with the Ringling Brothers Circus after a deadly train wreck. And it was a very trying time for the entire cast. And uh, Father Jerry and uh, one of his associates, Father David, came and spent about two weeks with us. Um, this was comfort uh, to be there for it. And that was very painful. I had you know, 15 clowns in the room holding on to each other to cry. Um, that was a, uh, seven difficult days. Do you think that there's something spiritual about what your congregation does for a living? To me, circus is like the divine liturgy. It has all the aspects of uh, taking your gifts that God has given you and expressing them to these people who come to their, their, their sacred place to watch them work. It's a great time when we can gather together. And that community. spirit takes on a special meaning when Father Jerry takes center ring at his ecumenical prayer service. What does Father Jerry do for you and, and for the circus? We almost have the same job. It's to try to help people forget about the, the down points in life and try and bring them up. I love the circus, and, uh, and I love my priesthood. And to combine the both, to, to be able to sit there and watch uh, these people do these great skills and to be able to uh, know them as friends and family, I love it. This is Steve Abelson for Good Morning America Sunday. Isn't that cool? When we come back from the big... That was um, it's a long time ago. <laughs> I'm dating myself now. Yeah, Bella was... Uh, he started uh, in Mexico. He's been performing all his life. The, the Knox family, called the Nervous Knox. They go up these sway poles 65 feet in the air, and they do a uh, fabulous show. I'll talk a little longer, and then I'll do a, a time for a, a question and answers also. Um, I forgot about the train wreck. Yeah, that was another uh, tragedy we had. And... Um, Keep that course because you people uh, are very familiar. We had the tragedy in Providence, Rhode Island when the seven girls fell. I was at the rectory in uh, St. Mary's. Uh, ironically, uh, Melissa Gill, a friend of mine, was doing a documentary and she was filming me in the rectory when we got the call. They fell and five minutes later I got the call and we immediately went down there and I went down to um, the, they were in the hospital. And first I went over to the show because Jonathan Lee Iverson, the ringmaster, we started at the beginning and his psychic, Paulo, from Brazil, about this tall, they couldn't stop crying because they, they just watched him come down so fast, you know, and they landed and uh, it was a mess. I, I was in the emergency ward with them and there was, I think, a total of, I think it was 16 broken bones. I said, one, one girl didn't receive too much, uh, Samantha, and, um, and I'm walking through the thing and I'm, uh, I'm praying over them and knowing to them, I didn't even have to work and just getting them ready for operations. And um, Samantha turned to me and just big smile and says, isn't God great, we're all alive. And I'm saying, yeah, honey child, you're all alive, but boy, there's a lot of, a lot of broken bones here. Um, one girl, um, it, when I threw a spleen, we were worried that she might not make it. Stephanie, she was the youngest, she was 19. 
Um, but they all came back. One girl, Diana from Brazil, uh, they, they told us she'd probably never walk again. And we were down in Providence at the Rhode Island Hospital for two weeks, and then we shipped them all up to uh, Spalding. I was with them. I ended up, we left, we discharged them on August 13th, uh, 14th. It was like 46 days I was with them. Uh, unbelievable um, the, the resilience of the kids. Uh, not too many were working. Uh, Diana, I'll never forget, this is she was a very, very devoted family. And father had just retired from Brazil as a th physical therapist and the mother, and they were just coming to live in America. So um, they were there at the hospital all the time. The parents, the Cho put them up in hotels, and, and uh, they were going through all their physical therapy. And, um, you know, Diana was very discouraged and stuff. She got to walk again. Her husband was their great guy. Uh, so then I, um, I had to go up to Montreal, Cirque du Soleil, and to a convention up there. So I was gone for five or six days, and I came back, and Diana's sitting in the side bench. She says, Father Jerry, I'm walking. I says, what do you mean you're walking? She says, yeah, I was at the sink a few days ago, and I looked in the mirror, and all of a sudden I hear this voice. says, Diana, take some steps. And I took some steps. I said, really? And then her husband, uh, Paolo, came over and says, yeah, come here. And she walked towards me. I was flabbergasted. I said, well, he said, I was down in therapy after that. In the therapy room, at the, if you've ever been to the Faulkner House, uh, Spalding Hospital, it's enormous. It's probably as big as this whole area. And she's out there, and she started walking with the therapist. And everyone stopped and started applauding. They had never seen her. It was truly a miracle. And then she started practicing, and she, she was a former dancer, so she, they put a videotape on, and she started dancing with the whole thing. So she came through it, and she just had a baby last July. They live in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, and the father helps her a lot because he was a former physical therapist. Uh, so so <coughs> in, continuing that story, there was a girl, that, the, girl the one that said to me, Father, isn't God great? We're, we're all alive. Samantha. Um, she w went back to ringing for a while, felt very discouraged. She doesn't know why God spared her and not the other kids, and oh, we had to go through all that. So eventually, um, I'm down in Circus, so, uh, Circus Sarasota. We have a big tent down by where I live in the mall, and we do a show in February. And then at the end of March, just before we tear the tent down, we have a, a three day circus called Cirque de, de Va, Circus of Voices where the key chorale of Sarasota, 100 voices, comes to the tent, an orchestra of 50, and we put on acts, not the same acts that were, were done in February. And I'm looking at the program, and there's Samantha. She created an act, hair hanging, and a le leah, which is like a hula hoop on a, a pulley. <laughs> and she, she did it to this, this beautiful music, and I went over to Sarah, and mom, mom and dad were there, and she started training, she went up to Montreal uh, January 2017, worked at the National Circus School in Montreal, got a contract with Cirque du Soleil. She started today rehearsals for a new show that's going to open in India in September. Yeah, they're going to do two weeks of uh, previews up in Montreal. Hope to go up and see it. So, man, I said, that's fabulous. You know? Could you always wonder what happened? So that, that's, that's one of those positive stories, but uh, that was a real difficult time. And then we had the closing, you know, last year. Well, the year before, Ringling, we've been dealing with uh, a petter and the abuse of animals. Animals are treated better than human beings. Three full-time veterinarians. Your own, uh, elephants cost between sixty-five and seventy thousand dollars. Would you mistreat an elephant? You know, they're well taken care of, but constant, constant lawyers uh, pulling licenses for circuses. You can't perform, elephants can't perform in New York State anymore. They, they're constantly challenging that. So Ringling finally was spending a million dollars a week on lawyers. A million dollars a week. Can you believe that? Unbelievable. The train cost $8 million a year to move. So you're taking big money. You know, we, we call it the nut. You have to have a, um, you have to make so much money a week to keep going, the nut. And up to Ringling's up to $78,000 a week just to keep the thing going. So anyway, they decided, make an announcement, they were going to get rid of elephants. And that was the beginning of the end. So they, uh, two years ago, uh, they got rid of the elephants. And I was in Providence when they finished doing the elephants. And they, they have a farm for them. And, they, and there was a breeding farm, too. 
they got them up there now, but some of them have gone to uh, zoos. And a, a gentleman who has a lot of money, he a, owns um, a professional, I think it's a, I don't know his exact name, I think it's a football team, some money, and he bought a bunch of them. So then they try to come out with a show without uh, uh, animals. They, they, no, two years, they rehearsed and went, and no one went. Because the survey said 65, 70% of the people went, went to see the elephants. So they were really losing money. So they made this announcement. We all thought they were going to close one unit and keep it together, but they closed both. And they got out of the business, you know. So, uh, you know, it was very difficult. It was like a wake preparing the, uh, the show. And then we went down to Providence, and I was there for the whole run. And then we had to get everyone off the train and into uh, we'll go back to their countries. So on Monday after the show, we're hustling people to Providence and, and Logan. They're going to China. They're going to Argentina. They're going to Brazil. They're going all over the world, you know. So you had to get them off the train. So the train then was going to leave and go back to Tampa with no one on except two people. But I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something different. I'm gonna, I bless the train every year. We, we've always had a presence since 1928 blessing the train. Monsignor also under the first pastor of St. Martha's, who you saw in the thing, he started blessing the train. He was in the movie, The Greatest Show on Earth. If you ever saw that, and there's a priest blessing, that's the real pastor. He was pastor from 1928 to 1966. So I'd, I'd bless the train I'd be on, on a pickup. And I, so this year I was determined. So I, I stood there on the bank uh, a year ago, and I blessed the train, the ghost train as it left. That was a few days later, it caught on to me. And then two weeks later, we were in Uniondale. And I had to do the whole thing over again. It's just not me. I have two other priests who help me. Father Dick Nott, who's 80 years old. He's been retired 10 years. He speaks Spanish. So he does a lot with the Spanish community and Spanish circuses. And Father Frank Cancro, a pastor in Charlotte, he tried out for Crown College and got kicked out. <laughs> he's a great guy. He studied in Rome. He's a, he was a lawyer, canon lawyer. And he's there. And I have some nuns. I used to have four nuns. I got one now, Sister Dorothy. And uh, she's out in Circus Vargas in California. So we all do it together. It's not the Jerry Hogan show. It's, it's the ministry for everyone. So they were, all, we were all together in that final show. And the final show is streamed live from Uniondale. And at the end, they invite all the people. It's about 100 performers, but there's like 350. For every performer, there's two people backstage. So at the end of the show, they invited us all, and even the ministry. They announced who we were, and we were appointed by the bishops. And uh, it was a, a very exciting and a moving, very difficult time. So that's all basically that. Um, what are we doing for time? Is there oh, I should tell you, as, as Joan said, uh, I'm pretty busy down in Sarasota. I work at St. Martha's Church, St. Master every day, but I also, I run a trailer park. <laughs> we have found back 20 years ago, we actually found some circus people who are homeless. We couldn't believe it. A lot of these people, if you're a performer like Bell All Knock, you make serious money and you buy land. And a lot of the old circus people, when they were in Florida, bought land. So, you know, land is valuable. But there's a lot of people who never had a home who still have a trailer. And you can't hook a trailer up in Sarasota. The restrictions are incredible. So we discovered that we had to do something about that. So we formed Circus and Traveling Show Retirement, Inc. And we started raising money. So we bought a trailer park in Sefna, Florida, which is outside of Tampa. And it holds uh, 10 trailers with hookups for uh, water and electricity. And there's a building on there. We have a, a woman and her husband who are property managers run that. And we have an executive director who helps us raise money. So then when Ringland closed, they gave me a, a train car for free. 90 feet long train car. Yeah, what do you do with a train car, right? Well, you try to get it on the Sefna property. It cost us $50,000, no, $10,000, what was that? $10,000 to get it. So I hustled, got the $10,000. And, uh, and they gave me four uh, box uh, wagons, which, which is store. So if you go by, you, all of a sudden, it looks like a mini winter quarters. So we're gutting it out, and we're using it as a common room. So all the people who live there. We have uh, five people living there now. We can take 10. We had six. A person passed away recently. And, uh, and they, they live on their trailers. We don't buy them the trailers. They have their own trailers. And we only charge them one third of their Social Security. Some of these people are only making six to eight hundred, yeah, six hundred to eight hundred dollars a month for Social Security. Some of them are on food stamps. I mean, yeah. And they were concession people, working people who, you know, 
never thought they'd always be traveling with the circus, you know. And they get some of them getting up there in age. So I, I hustled, uh, and then this year I'm down there, and uh, the water went, it got, became dirty. Oh, geez. I had to raise $22,000, and we put in new pipes so the water is clean so they could take a shower and everything, you know. So you're always dealing with stuff like that, but um, um, it's part of the ministry, and we've also got people who are going to give us their land when they pass away in Sarasota, and they're grandfathered in for horses and stuff like that, so... It's very good. I go out to dinner every year with some of these people. And I say, how are you feeling? <laughs> you know, they write us up and they go, how are you feeling? I don't know. I know. But uh, it's great. I, I love these people. It's so much fun. And I, I, I have a lot of fun down there. And uh, it's, of course, it's nice to be down there in the winter, too. Um, but um, it's, cha it's, it's challenging. Um, why don't we open for question and answers? OK. Do it. Any, any questions? When a yeah. circus breaks up, like Ringling Brothers yeah. did, what happens to all their equipment? Does it go to they the sell circus? it. Although, yeah, sometimes circus owners will go on in some small shows and buy it. Yeah, in the they had to get rid of 114 train cars. Yeah. Uh, so they some people bought a lot of people bought them. Um, you got, it was been, I got it free, but some of them 55, 60, 70 thousand. <laughs> by the way, um, Ringling Brothers was owned by a company named Feld Entertainment. Kenneth Fell, the owner, his father and his uncle bought the show from the Ringling Brothers in 1967. And they brought Gunther Gable Williams, the blonde animal trainer. Remember his family? I, I did his funeral. I married his son. Um, Gunther retired when I started working in the ministry. And um, so what they did, they branched out. Feld Entertainment owns and produces all the Disney and I show. Disney doesn't. They just license it. So they have 17 shows traveling all over the world on ice shows. They also have Monster Jam, which is coming to George Stadium. And last Saturday, they had the motorcycles there. He has Marvel Show, which is in Providence this week. And they were in Worcester last week. They created this show. And they have Sesame Street Live, which was in BU last week. So they have all these shows traveling. So they're making a lot of money. And uh, it's quite an operation. They have a big headquarters in Ellington, Florida. So, yeah, so they move it up. Question, yes? Yeah. So if you take one of these pamphlets, you could help out the Oh, yeah, I got them in the back. Well, you, before you leave this, I got the pamphlets in the back, and I also got uh, a folder of different, me and the Pope with red noses on. It was Photoshopped. <laughs> I haven't met, I've met uh, St. Paul, John Paul II twice. When we had a meeting every seven or eight years, and there's people, like 110 people are in the world who do this work. And we have a meeting in Rome, it's five days, and it concluded... Uh, meeting the Holy Father, private audience, like 45 of us uh, to 60 of us. And in, in the first year, I gave him a Ring Brothers jacket. And I got a great shot. And Kenny Feld, who's Jewish, went, Jerry, that was a great shot. And they put it in the program or something. I said, oh, that's pretty good. And then a few years later, I'm going down to see him again. I said, Kenny, I'm going to go see the Pope. Oh, God, we've got to do something. So the day I'm leaving FedEx, I get this beautiful ringmaster's hat and his scroll making the Holy Father the honorary ringmaster. <laughs> I said, this is pretty cool. So we get to the meeting. He has Parkinson's now. This is five months before he died. So I'm talking to these bishops uh, over a drink, and we're all sitting around. And I said, we all got to go up and see him? Oh, no, no, we can't do that anymore, Father. We're only going to designate 20 people. And it was like 75 of us. I said, I got to get in that line, baby. <laughs> so I went up there. I said, I got something special I want to show him. So I get down, bring it down, and oh, they thought that was great. So I got pushed in the line. You know? <laughs> so I went up. I, so I got a picture of me with him that time. And then a few years later, we went when Benedict was there. Well, Benedict's German, so he doesn't do private audiences. You're in the audience hall with about eight thousand people. We're in the second row, but you know, I gave him something, but I never saw him. You know? <laughs> so we haven't met Francis yet, but there's a picture of me with the red nose with Francis. But it's that tells in the brochure. There are two kinds, a uh, picture of the train, everything. If you want to contribute, or you can mail it to the, down to Florida to a, uh, a, a mailing down there. Be, anything would, would be appreciated. Uh, any other question answers? Any, yes? Uh, what's the name of that parade? It was the Great Circus Parade. Great Circus Parade. They don't have it anymore. Oh, yeah. But if you went online, I bet you you could see pictures. Yeah. It was cost, Schritz, uh, Schritz Bury started it. And then, but they, they don't do that anymore. Anything? Yes? Go on. Father, you said there were 116 uh, chaplains throughout the world. Uh, About 106, 116. 106. 
Yeah, a lot of nuns. Yeah. And, and one nun. No, 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 no. <laughs> one nun here now. I used to have four nuns. Yeah. But a lot of the nuns are the Little Sisters of Jesus, yeah. Child's Day for Call group, and they're big in Europe. They do circuses and carnivals, and they call the amusement parks there, um, to get another name for, oh, what's the name? Like, but anyway, they actually have little stands there. They do a lot of evangelization. And there's, there's chaplains come from Brazil, Chile, uh, France. There's, Germany has four uh, chaplains. One, they just made a bishop. And uh, we, they used to, I went over there a few times, they had ecumenical meetings. They also get together at Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo has a circus festival the uh, second week in January, where they bring in the, they look around and bring in the top acts, and they have judges, and they get serious money, and they, they perform two shows, an A show on Thursday, a B show on Friday, repeat the A show on Saturday, and the B show Sunday, and then they vote for the top acts. And then on Tuesday, they have a presentation, which is on in TV in Europe, red carpet, the whole nine yards. On the Monday, they have an ecumenical service where they fill the church. So we... Father Nada and I were there three years ago, four years ago now, and we went to the ecumenical service. So we're wearing our, our, our colorful vestments. Oh, even the bishops there, they got their vestments on. And it's amazing. You go out, I think there was like 50 ministers, and we all sit around the thing, and we're praying in five languages, and you pray for a while, and then all of a sudden the gnat comes out. <laughs> and they start juggling. And then all of a sudden... You go back, you pray more. And then another act comes, and then the final act is five elephants come out. <laughs> I said, this is pretty cool. And they, it's all free, and they fill the place. And so Monte Carlo is, uh, Prince Rene started it, and his family keep it up. And it's, it's, if you win in Monte Carlo, it's like winning the Academy Award. That helps you. And all the producers come. There's a picture of a girl in there that was performing. And I look at it, I said, I recognize her. I baptized her on Ringling. So mother's or Russian, her father's from Guatemala. And um, I hadn't seen her in years, Stephanie. And she came in third, you know? I saw the picture of me with her there. And I, I, that, was, that was a thrill. Oh, so, yeah. Are, are these 116 chaplains yeah. all Catholics, or are they? No. Uh, well, the ones that went to Rome, yeah. But there are other ministers from other faiths, too. Yeah. They have an ecumenical meeting in Monte Carlo. Yes. And the children of the circus, what did they do for their education? On Ringlings, we had teachers. We had everything. We had daycare. You know, we had, we had a restaurant there. You know, um, A lot of them do homeschool. In the state of Florida, if you're a resident of Florida, you can do homeschool free. You can actually go to college online free and if you're a, a resident of Florida. So a lot of them do nowadays with everyone has uh, computers, so they do everything. And some of them are very, very bright. A lot of these kids and people, the young people, uh, not even the young people, they read four or five books of them. I'm sitting there, they're reading everything. They're very, very, they work very hard, but they also are very bright. Yes, yeah, or. Um, did you ever get up on the trapeze? I blessed it, that's my favorite act, by the way. I got up on the podium once, but boy, that thing shakes. I love the trapeze, that's my favorite act. Um, now, the ring, uh, Big Apple's in town. To, to Mother's Day, and it's a fabulous trapeze, a fabulous show. It's right there in a, a, a Sumble, and um, in the boy there, we call in in the trapeze act. You have to have the skill of a ballerina, the grace, but you also have the strength. And the catcher, it's like a middle linebacker. Father Matt would be a great catcher. <laughs> now, be, be a, really, you have to be strong. And you, and when they come into them. Doing a triple, you're coming in about 55 to 60 miles an hour, and you catch up here, and the rods and holds you get down the hand. So if you're catching the hand, you're going to fall. So you catch here and you slide down. So you go into the, the triple. Well, there haven't been many do a quad for somersaults, but there is a kid now, Tatsiani, his name is, that's his last name, and he's hit the quad. Last week, I called him up, they were having a party. He hit, hit 100 quads on Big Apple since October. So it's really tough on the uh, on the catcher because it starts pulling the hand. But he's done the quad, so that's it. And they have the Wallenders, Nicky w uh, Ricky Wallender, the guy who walked across Niagara Falls. Yeah. He's doing the seven man pyramid. His family did for years. So it's uh, it's kind of an exciting show. It's a real good show if you get a chance uh, to see it. Is yes. There just one Wallender left. 
to oh no go ahead once more they multiply like uh, it's like i know i know 32 of them oh the, everyone if your name you might be married to someone else but if you got a heritage of use the name Melinda, they all use the name but they are they are related second third fourth cousins i've married a few of them yeah yeah um, a few of us went to the show in Boston That's right. a few years ago, and we met the master of ceremonies, Egro. Yeah. I think that was his name. John Kennedy Kennedy. How's he doing? He's looking for work. <laughs> I talked to him today. He, he's not on the big app. He's doing um, some fair. He did the Big E last two years, and he's doing the Big E this year. That's a 17-day fair, you know, in Springfield, and they have a free circus. Yeah. And he's going to be up in a... He's from Buffalo. He lives in Buffalo, and he's going to be a circus up there. He's working... Uh, Rudolf Tazian Zerbini last year was in Canada. So I talked to him like three or four times a, a week. He's the funniest guy I know. Father Matt can tell you because I'm always roughing in my room. <laughs> Egg roll, oh, if Egg roll would keep you going. He has, he has a one-man show he does, My Life in the Basement. <laughs> yeah. He's doing good. He's doing good. <laughs> Anything else? Well, great. It's been great. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, see you down the road. It lasts only three seconds. Five, four. Blink, and it's over. Two, one, fire. But what a ride. John Weiss hurdles through the air at 65 miles an hour. It's a short commute, only 100 feet, till he hits the net. And he's made this trip more than 4,000 times. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> You're shooting out of a cannon. What do you I, I really, I really enjoy it. I mean, I enjoy coming. I enjoy going to work. How many people can say that? Woo! You know all the cliches, right? You know, you got to give it a shot and all this <laughs> the stuff. The right caliber. He's the only person that gets hired and fired in the same day. <laughs> You've I'm heard a big it. shot in the circus. <laughs> How long can you do this? I don't know. But as long as I can, as long as I enjoy it, like I said earlier. I will do it. I enjoy it. Fire! Live entertainment. A person really being shot out of a can. No wires, no camera tricks, no nothing. I'm doing a, a major stunt on a daily basis, sometimes three times a day. And it's a total high. It's great. I love it. <laughs> I truly enjoy it. <laughs>